Hi, I'm James Schillinglaw, and I'm here with Vanessa Famigetti, who is the co-founder of Beyond the Nest. Now, what's Beyond the Nest? Well, we're going to find out all about that. It is a unique company, and it's a startup during a time of COVID. So that's another interesting thing about it. Uh, but we, we saw this. Uh, they sent out a press release. We thought it was interesting, and we thought it was an interesting idea. And I think you'll find the same, and you're going to find out all about it on Insider travel report. Now, first of all, Vanessa, how are you and where are you? I am quite well. I'm feeling good this Monday morning and I am in San Diego, California. Oh, wonderful. Well, you guys are opening up sort of, I guess, gradually out there in California. So that's good. It feels like it's happening a lot faster than gradually, I'll say. Um, we have live events starting again. We have increased capacity indoor and outdoor. So it's starting to feel like uh, springtime in San Diego is, is back. So that's Yeah, that's it. great. Well, we've been seeing all the theme parks are getting their dates starting to open up finally. And um, I'm even thinking of going out there one of these days to do some, some work and do check out some hotels. But we'll see how that goes. Uh, let's talk about your new company, uh, Beyond the Nest. Tell us a little bit about it uh, and what it offers. Yeah, so Beyond the Nest is, you're right, we're a startup and we are a travel company that's built for the post-COVID world. Um, we initially, we, when I say we, I'm referring to uh, myself and my co-founder, Mary Fusio, um, who's 62, so she's a generation apart from me, and um, we're leading the business together. Okay. And what we determined, so she and I were traveling together pre-COVID and we saw an area in the travel industry where we could offer more support and um, where we could offer a community for people that were interested in location independence and digital nomadism and working remotely, but who needed um, perhaps a little bit of a primer, who wanted some workshops on how to do it, who wanted to speak with experts and get to know a community that was right there in their niche with them and move forward together. So that's kind of what we were pondering pre-COVID is right. we want to help people um, build location independent lifestyles that work for them on, on their terms. Got it. Uh, as COVID went on, we obviously went into a holding position and um, Gosh, I mean, for a minute, we didn't know what things were going to look like. But during the pandemic, we decided that we, I mean, there's nothing else that I would rather do than be helping travelers experience the world and have profound experiences like I've had traveling. Right. So if COVID is going to prevent us from moving, then after this finishes, we're going to need one another and we're going to need very experiential travel, community-based travel with growth themes um, that are really going to bring us back to life, take us out of uh, a headspace that might have been really confusing for a year or a year and a half, okay. and help us recalibrate. No, it, it sounds like a great idea. Now, let, let's talk about, you talked a little bit about that target market. I think in your, your literature, you talk about it, it is aimed at empty nesters and empty nesties. So that's definitely where we're starting, and um, I, that definitely comes from myself and Mary's background. So I myself am 28. I met Mary when I was 26 as an empty nesty myself, obviously having left home. Now I was leading a group of digital nomads around the world for Hacker Paradise, a digital nomad company. Um, and Mary herself, as an empty nester, was looking for a way to further her development. So she'd already taken a sabbatical and determined that travel in retirement was something that she wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, now we've met in 2019 in Belgrade, Serbia, and really kind of put those plans um, into action. But no, we're not just for empty nesters and empty nesties. We do have themes. So our trips are based on themes. And one of those themes is flying the coop. And that is developed for empty nesters who are looking to find more space in their life for what they really love. Right. They're looking to recalibrate their motivation and their passions post COVID and post pandemic. And they're looking to get back to themselves. So redetermine who is it that they are now after COVID, how might it have changed them? How do they need to redefine their boundaries? Sure. Um, and what is it that they can do to help themselves get back to a place of happiness and excitement in an unstable world? Um, so in that case, yes, we do work with empty nesters, but the themes that we offer are really varied. What Beyond the Nest believes profoundly is that post COVID, 
what people need in order to really absorb the experience and the beauty and the profound elements of travel is that you need community. That's the non-negotiable. And I, I've worked in community and group travel my entire life, and I absolutely love it. We believe that community is really a non-negotiable. On top of that, we believe that having a growth theme in mind as you travel or experience a retreat does help to unify the community under a certain thought process or a certain um, a certain aim. And then on top of that, we let our community help to develop what it is that they want to do. Sure. So for instance, uh, another one of the themes that we're working with is work from home to work from anywhere. And that's one of the themes that we're offering during our first trip in San Miguel. And that one is not age specific. It's aimed at anyone who's interested in uh, taking their brick and mortar and making it a remote business. Sure. It's great for business partners that now are going to be remote or dispersed and need some help working on that. Or for people who are looking to find a remote job and now they realize nomadism and slowmadism and all these different isms are can be part of their life. Sure. So we help them find those opportunities. No, it's 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 in it's interesting uh, what you you know because it is really it's interesting your first trip is sort of cross generational uh, and you're not really focused on on one or the other so whether you know you were talking about an empty nester or empty nestee or someone is is really nomadic and wants to cannot you know one of the things that's come out of this is that we can work from anywhere mm -hmm. um, uh, and and everybody is starting to understand that uh, I've been doing I, I, dirty secret I've been doing that for a long time uh, I've been working you know for now since 2003 I've been working from home or wherever I am so mm -hmm. I, I get it I get that that this is something that people have to get away from and to start thinking that you can actually experience the world and and develop a sense of community outside during a travel experience. And then furthermore, I think that what this year has done to a lot of people is, well, it's driven us right to our screen, right? Exactly how you and I are connecting right now. And one of the things that I, I would hope to impart to our community is that all of these changes, such as the fact that now you and I will probably only ever meet over Zoom, or that Zoom meetings will continue to be um, the first method of interaction for any kind of interviews or for getting together with people even, it, we aim to help people maximize their digital presence, maximize their interactions, understand what it is that 2020 has wrought, meaning, what programs we need to understand. Zoom isn't going anywhere. No. Uh, other digital communication technologies aren't going anywhere. And we believe that helping people have a, a good, solid understanding of those tools is going to help them move forward into, a, into developing a lifestyle they want. So if they want to have someone sit in their home for six months a year and live in Portugal or live in Brazil or the Greek Isles, then we want to help them learn how to do that. But what it is, is it's not, we're not, um, we're open to any age group. We're open to any level of experience. Right. And I think that's kind of what differentiates us. Now, um, let's talk a little bit about um, your background and, and that of your partner, because I think that's very interesting. You, know, you, you, had, a, you had a travel uh, background, Mary did not. But first, tell us about yourself and then tell us a little bit about Mary's background. Yeah, definitely. So I... Um, I got into travel one year exactly after graduating college. I um, graduated UC Berkeley in 2015, um, and then I spent a year working in tech in San Francisco. Um, and as soon as my um, as soon as my shares became mine, I opted out, and I knew that uh, I knew that travel was where I needed to be. I'd seen an Instagram advertisement about digital nomadism, and the thought that that was a possible way of living one's life was so inspiring. Mm -hmm. I had recently overcome cancer. I was diagnosed with cancer in my junior year of college, and then during my senior year, uh, was focused on um, recovery as, as well as school. So I did graduate on time, dean's list, but okay. I. Yeah, but I was very quiet that year. I had tongue cancer, so I didn't speak very much. Um, I believe that having gone through that experience and then realizing that I had my healthy voice and I had this healthy body and I was so excited to explore that putting it off was really not the way I wanted to live. I mean, I calculated my vacation days and my bucket list, right, at 20 years old, my bucket list destination. Right. And I calculated it would take seven years of work to go to those places. And that wasn't, that just wasn't going to fly because right. 
in my mind, who knows what could happen to your body or your health. So uh, I just had to get out there. And the first travel job that I had, I would not change for, for anything. It was absolutely incredible. I was a chief experience officer or a trip lead uh, for G Adventures. Now I know so, G Adventures very well. Yeah. Yes. I loved working with G Adventures. I, I had a fantastic time. Um, they were newer to North America. It was one of their first years working in North America. They were working through a DMC at the time. And I was leading trips through their DMC for G Adventures through North America. So I had a commercial driver's license, three weeks of training, three weeks of excellent training, um, and a passenger list of 16. Okay. And we set out on voyages that were 4,000 miles and 23 oh, wow. days long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you, I mean, when it comes to keeping a show on the road, there is nothing that will get your feet wet, like breaking the axle to a trailer in the middle of <laughs> Wyoming and having people play cards at a gas station for entertainment. So that, that's why they call it an adventure. It, oh yeah. And that's what we would always refer back to, you know, something goes awry. Okay. Um, but, from, you know, there is only a certain amount of time you can sleep in a tent. And um, so once that kind of, once the season ended, I knew that I wanted to do some more solo travel, focus on my own remote career. Um, and I started working remotely and traveling and developing that kind of lifestyle. Um, but I, I wasn't interested in just writing copy. I wasn't interested right. in being a virtual assistant or a social media manager. So when I came back to the U.S., I started working at Classic Journeys, which is um, you another might also company we know very well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was with them the year that they won number one tour operator from Travel and Leisure. Right. Um, that was a year that we actually um, brought in 23andMe sweepstakes winners as our bespoke travel winners. It was really fantastic. I had the opportunity to put together 23 unique uh, trips to places of people's origin based on the 23andMe genetics testing. It was, it. Um, it was, it was fantastic to be able to make someone's dreams come true or to be able to give them the call and say, yeah, you actually did one and we're ready to put it together for you. Um, so following my experience with um, classic journeys where I learned to build bespoke itineraries, I learned how to manage um, clientele while they're on the ground and in on trip. Um, then I moved into leading digital nomads with Hacker Paradise, as I mentioned prior uh, that was really a niche that I was interested in was the remote work revolution, which at, at that time looked very different than it does now. It looked a lot slower than it does now. Um, and I was ready to really greet that, um, greet that where it was and start to develop the um, digital nomad movement for people of various ages and various digital lifestyles because gotcha. we found that they were very exclusionary at the time and still do tend to be in some, some areas. Um, there's definitely home for active digital nomads. There's plenty of companies out there that will take you from spot to spot and you bring your job. Yeah. Um, but what we don't see as much of is a community that will take you wherever you are, knowing that your intention might be to have a remote career to potentially just have some remote jobs to finance your travel. You might be looking at long-term travel without working. So long-term travel and maybe volunteering abroad or even just finding your tribe abroad. We help with all of those skills. Interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Now, well, well, tell us a little bit about Mary, uh, Mary Fasilo's her, her career, because it's very different. It's not travel related. It is. It is different. So Mary is um, my senior. So she is, um, about 35 years older than me. And um, she comes from a background of nursing and fertility. So she owns three companies in Texas that are all, um, one is on the egg donor side, one is on the surrogate side, and one is on the uh, family side. I, don't, I mean, I'm sure that she could put this together a lot better than myself. But okay. she's helped over a thousand families have babies throughout the United States. She's based in Houston. Um, but in 2019, I, I mentioned her sabbatical. She took a month in Uruguay, in Montevideo, um, to really kind of take an inward step and say, I'm working so hard. I'm chasing so hard. Um, I'm acquiring wealth. But what is it that I'm really finding fulfilling? It's this month. And it's right. these people. And am I excited to go back to work? Um, and if not, then, you know, what, what really matters here? And I think that she had a revolution there in her mind that um, 
when you, when you have enough, being able to discern, I have enough and I deserve a break or I have enough and I will do better if I right. take a break. Um, no, that's, that's, yeah, that sounds perfect. And it is all, and especially now, I mean, it's, it's kind of odd that it took a pandemic to get people to think a lot more about these type of things. Although that happened before. Now, then of course you said you met her in Belgrade, uh, Serbia, as as one does, uh, you know, uh, in these kind of situations, and and I guess you were on a trip together. So, what 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 was the spark that kind of got you to think about a, creating a company like this? Yeah, so we were actually on a retreat together that was aimed at helping a digital nomad travel company develop ideas for expanding their business. So that was the theme of the retreat, I, uh, or of the digital nomad trip. I was one of the facilitators leading that trip. And then we had guests who visited from all over the world, including Mary from Texas, to help this company develop ideas for themselves to expand. As those uh, workshops and those breakout sessions um, took place, Mary and I found that we had the same level of thinking. Mm -hmm. I myself was in, I was a facilitator around the world and I would talk to my mom at home who was working from home and very unhappy and so interested in what we did, but so behind in terms of the technology, the communication, the skills, the community, the the this, the that. And I thought there's got to be space to teach those people how to do this because they want to live this life, but we're kind of saying, you got to already have your bags packed and then we'll give you a place to stay. Mm -hmm. And so Mary and I came forward with the idea of having a portion of the company be for people that... Uh, needed a little bit more foundation, people mm-hmm. that needed a little bit more hands-on time, people that were still a little bit more in the discovery phase of their location-independent lifestyle. Um, and we were shot down really hard. Really? Um, yeah, we were, I mean, uh, there were puns on of the name on, on what we did. Um, we were referred to Elder Hostel instead. We were uh, called Walker's Paradise. <laughs> um, so we found that that ageism was just jet fuel. I mean, to, to really then have evidence of the ageism and of the selectivity of these communities, we were like, okay, well, there's proof in the pudding that there's space to do this. Okay. Um, but as I said, once COVID hit, we determined that, yes, that needs to be a portion of the business, location independence, digital nomadism. We're always going to offer those themes. But now we need to expand into – community and wellness and growth, if you will. Sure. That, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, in a way, I was one of my questions was, what is it like to uh, form a company during a pandemic? But in a way, many of the themes that your company has adopted, and it, it almost is because of COVID, I would think. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, um, you know, we don't necessarily say that like, hey, come come on our trips and we're going to process what happened during COVID. But there's right. absolutely room for that. We're a community that's intimate. So we interweave workshops um, for our Flying the Coop workshop. We have some that are focused on um, redefining your boundaries. Mm-hmm. And so that one's really open and I find it really exciting. During COVID, we've had to drop boundaries left and right. I mean, people are staying no. with us. We're doing things for other people that we didn't ever expect to be doing. We're not doing things for ourselves that we would love to be doing, but we're afraid. Um, one of the things that we want to do is take a look at our boundaries and reestablish them. So what time is just me time? What right. space is my space? What about my life is a non-negotiable because I care about myself. So in, in those workshops, we do do a lot of natural processing of what happened last year and I think that that's only a testament to the fact that we're entirely authentic. If our community is going through, um, coming back from, you know, going through a tough experience, coming back from COVID and redefining their, their motivation, finding a new career, perhaps, I mean, huge changes have happened. Um, We adjust for our community. So we're small groups. We're about 10 to 12 people per trip. Um, And, we do a month of mentorship before the trip to really get to know people. So they'll sign up and they'll, they'll know that they've signed up for flying the coop. Right. And they're going to learn all about uh, recalibrating their motivation, finding space for their passions. They're going to be in a luxury environment and do cool things like wine tasting, rooftop bar tasting or rooftop bar tastings all around San Miguel, which is fantastic. Private art galleries and artisan market walks. Um, so set amongst all of these really fantastic experiences, 
we're also going to interleave the group's actual interests and workshops. Right. So um, itineraries are available on the website for our themes, but the itineraries are expected to change as our people come into the trip. So as they come into the trip, we fine tune it just a little bit and we make it something that really is bespoke. So no two trips will ever be the same, even if they're in the same location, focusing on the same growth theme. Got it. Now, what, what has it been like to have kind of a multi-generational company? So you have, uh, you have the, the, yeah. the view and you have Mary uh, and you also have um, customers, clients who are, are different generations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, well, I'll say in short, it's been hugely interesting and um, something that I just can't wait to have some time to really reflect on and have some time to further go through. I mean, we're in the early stages. I can't wait to see what it looks like down the road. Um, but what I will say in short is that Beyond the Nets never would have happened without Mary. I was 26 at the time and I didn't know some of the, I didn't know the hard business foundations. Sure. Mary came in without a background in travel, but with the business sense, the financial sense and uh, the wherewithal to really get us going. So in that sense, it, it, it's been fantastic. Now that we're coming into developing products and developing plans for the future, it's really interesting to be cross-generational. Um, right. There's, it requires patience, um, and that's beautiful. It requires patience because um, I've grown up with a different set of tech tools than she has. That's I've cool. grown up with a different toolbox. Um, so we are running a remote and dispersed company. Most of my team is in Houston, Northern California, and I'm here in San Diego. Um, and we use tools like Whereby and Slack and uh, Google Suite. So those tools weren't always used by business owners um, and getting that navigation, oh, having someone who's worked in brick and mortar for over 30 years move into a remote and dispersed company where nothing is really tangible and it's just right. all in the cloud is tough. Yeah, um, well, I, I can understand that. You, you just said three names I didn't know. So, like, <laughs> so it's, uh, I guess I know some things. I'm not totally technologically uh, uh, yeah, so, so light, but it's uh, it, it but, is tough because we don't know some of these things. Yeah, and that's our superpower is that I do I know those tech tools. Um, I can also teach them. That's part of what I did teach when I was leading nomads around the world. Um, and you know, more so than even us just being able to use it for our business, having a really good working knowledge of what's available to you digitally is crucial. So um, you know, it would be it's my due diligence to make sure that Mary understands. We have all of this at our disposal, okay. and we can now operate one at a much lower cost without any, without you know an office overhead, and uh, we can stay connected and see each other's live updates on documents. No, that's great. Um, that's quite wonderful. Now, let's talk a little bit about some of the programs. You, you said you have the one to San Miguel uh, coming yeah. up soon, I believe. Um, yeah, so we're actually less than ninety days. We're actually wow. less than ninety days out from San Miguel. Really excited about that trip. Um, we are in, we're actually in a small village right outside of San Miguel. It's called mm -hmm. Etotonilco, if you've ever been. Um, and it is home to the Sistine Chapel of Latin America. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful hand-painted fresco that people come from all over the world to enjoy. Uh, but our home is just right next to it. And it's a nine bedroom, 13 bathroom, two acre estate. No so problem. we did want to make sure, especially for our first trips, we'll see what happens, you know, in 2022 and so forth. But for our first trips post COVID, we want to be sure to really offer people a safe setting that's also luxurious and, and something that people want to enjoy. So our, our estate is fully socially distanced. Um, everyone is, you know, we offer COVID testing before arrival so that we can create a safe bubble around those um, that are not vaccinated, depending on yeah. how much of our community is, but that's something that we're also fluidly working out as, as all travel companies are. Um, and what our programming is, is we offer daily workshops for flying the coop, but we also have morning yoga or afternoon meditation. We have sessions by the pool where we sit and talk about different things. We have okay. a cooking class by our chef, like I mentioned, um, hot yoga classes. One night we're going out and doing a guided stargazing where the night sky is going to be bright and brilliant right above us. We've aligned it with the moon cycles. Oh, just right. so every finishing touch is done, is done just right. No, um, that's, that then, sounds like a great trip. How long is it going? Yeah, it's a week long. So okay. it's a six night and seven day retreat. Okay. And anyone that we interact with is tested prior to them being with us. 
um, within 48 hours. And we still take, we have a great combination of taking on the town and enjoying everything that there is to do in San Miguel, as well as coming back to our nest, our nine bedroom uh, retreat home and digesting everything and processing it and moving forward each day as a community stronger and stronger. No, that's wonderful. Now, uh, I know you said you had maybe some other itineraries on the website, but what are, where are some of the other places you're thinking about going? Gotcha. So we have Greece that's uh, listed. Oh. We'll be in Paros in um, September. Okay. And then in November, we're going to be in Malta and Gozo. So our Wonderful. Retreat- that's, I've always wanted to go to Malta. That's amazing. It's Malta is amazing. amazing. I love it. I, I did a case study in Malta, um, and I absolutely fell in love with it. And um, it does seem to be a big draw for people. So I'm hoping to get people to come over to Malta and experience that in the little sister island of Gozo, which is beyond picturesque. Um, from 2022, we're looking at a much wider array of locations. Of course, we're all rolling with the punches as things open. Uh, yeah. But our ideal itinerary would include Vietnam, Thailand, um, as well as potentially India in early 2022. Mm-hmm. We're taking on a full uh, full um, European season as well. We'll be doing Portugal. We'll be working in Spain, in France, uh, in Greece again, depending on demand. And then South America is somewhere that I absolutely love. I've spent years living and traveling around South America, and I'm excited to get groups back to places like uh, Buenos Aires, Cartagena, Mm -hmm. Colombia, um, places in Costa Rica that are really fantastic. Um, But more so than anything, what we do anticipate changing with our business or where we're going to grow here um, once travel does open up a little bit more past just the post-COVID crew is we do want to provide a host of themes that interest people. Um, it, but they're very wide ranging themes, anything from making a career change to reestablishing intimacy. And that can be with either a romantic partner or with a business partner. Mm-hmm. Um, we can, we also are doing um, mother and daughter trips or father okay. and son trips or family trips um, to get families out there in a safe way and also start experiencing travel a little bit more deeply than they would if they were just at home. Right. Um, and then we also have a great community where people can recommend themes. And as soon as a theme is recommended by our community, by a couple people in our community, we start to engage with them and see what is it that you want to learn um, in this kind of wellness theme or this growth theme. And then how can we build it and see if there's a real, a real group there that's working, right, that's right. interested yeah. in going. That makes sense now, but but the unifying factor to this, I think, it, on your website and in the release that you sent out was that all of these kind of trips will combine wellness, learning seminars, and unforgettable travel experiences all in five-star accommodations. Exactly, exactly. So, like I said earlier, our non-negotiable is community. We believe that community is what one needs to really have a deep experiential travel time. Um, there are a million ways to do it, but I love community travel. We also believe in having luxury accommodations because that's just the way that we roll. There's a million ways that you can travel. You can camp if you like, but we do believe in having a beautiful place to rest and relax and enjoy yourself at the end of the day, as well as enjoy one another with plenty of private spaces, plenty of pools, bonfires, beach views, um, just everything to really set the scene. Mm -hmm. And then from there... Everything is about, yeah, wellness and growth, which we kind of do hold synonymously. Um, and it's hard not to, right? When you're being good to yourself and when you're, when you're forming uh, habits of wellness, that is growth as well. So that could be um, getting back into the workforce for those that were urged out in 2020. Um, sure. That could also mean developing a specific, um, you know, specific career goals that, that may come up. So, it's very much community oriented in terms of the themes. We're starting with our, the ones that we truly believe in, the ones that we're experts in, and the ones that we have a strong community of experts mm-hmm. in, because we always invite experts to travel with us and offer some of these workshops. Um, so that's how we build the trips. Yeah, well, it doesn't sound like you're going to be worrying about breaking an axle in the middle of the desert anymore uh, with this particular company, or maybe you will, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I could be, um, but yeah, my training with Classic Journeys has kind of shown me um, a lot of how to lead luxury travel, how to create a luxury travel experience, how to sell luxury travel, um, and then also how to speak to a potential traveler um, and to discern what it is that they're looking for. And those calls are even more interesting now as we move past COVID um, because 
the conversation with a potential traveler is, is really a lot more um, yeah. personal. I find that they're very personal calls. Um, and I also find that there are just so many more um, potential barriers to entry than there used to be. No, absolutely. Now, um, obviously, we're going out to about 85,000 travel advisors out there, and they're going to be curious about how they can work with you and how they can sell your, your uh, unique new product. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, how they might do that? Yeah, most definitely. So we will always have uh, trips scheduled on our website. We'll have about 10 trips for 2022 on the website here within the next month. Um, you know, please be aware that our late 2022 trips could change depending on country openings and closings. I think that we all are aware of that at this point. Um, but we are always going to have our regularly scheduled trips, which will be about 10 per year. And those will have things that we've already decided upon and it'll kind of have an itinerary that we're already loosely giving so that you will have the capacity to sell that trip. Sure. It, you know, for instance, you'll know this is a six day, seven night trip where they are going to have an expert on, um, let's say, um, on spiritual healing, right? Okay. So you really want to get your spirit and your source, right? You want to feel good with the universe. We'll have experts on that. Um, you'll be aware that the workshops will take place by the experts, by our team, that we have about a one-to-one -one staff to client ratio and are going to maintain that. Okay. Um, and you'll also have an itinerary as well as locations and whatnot. Those, those itineraries will get tightened up in collaboration with your actual clients, but they are uh, succinct and they are described in enough detail to sell. Now, we offer travel agents a 10% discount, um, or pardon me, a 10% commission um, on any products that they sell with us, and that is um, on top of any discount that we may already need to honor given our marketing. Um, if we have a great relationship with, with travel agents, we're definitely open to making that um, an even more generous offer okay. and for long-term partnership. As I said, and as you've said, starting a travel company post-COVID um, as your first company is insane. <laughs> and so, <laughs> it really is short of insane. Let, so, let, let, let's root for insanity then. So you're, Yeah, you're I mean, there's no other way to go. It's what I'd love to do. It's what I think the world needs. And so I'm just going to, I'm going to give it. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, so, so for travel agents, we do have clear enough products, but I also want to be really clear about this, is that our trips are small groups. So if you right. have a family of three, if you have three clients that are interested in somewhere and they um, want to do retreat style or they want to do trip style, meaning two nights per location moving around, um, and they want some kind of growth theme, um, they can just request absolutely anything with us. And with you, you will create something, you will create something for groups. Uh, oh yeah. Not, so not part of your, yeah. Mm -hmm. The idea is that eventually we want to create a really good insular community where people are saying, where repeat travelers are saying, this is what I want to grow on this year. This is my theme of growth this year. And this is the region I want to do it. Let's say Southern Spain or, you know, the Greek Isles or really anywhere. I'm, I'm excited to go to Iceland. I'm excited to take people to Austria. Um, and then once we have a few people that are interested in that, we build up the community discussion and then we create a trip that's based on demand instead of hoping that people book retreats that we are excited about. No, and I think that's a good way to go. Absolutely. Now, is there anything else you want to tell our travel advisor audience about uh, Beyond the Nest, about your own experiences in forming the company or anything else? Um, I would want to say that it's absolutely, we're ready to start taking reservations. We're ready to start taking sales. Um, our Greek page is official. We've just landed our 12 bedroom estate in Paros. It's absolutely out of this world. The pictures will be online later today. Okay. Um, and we're actively selling for Malta, for Greece and for uh, San Miguel de Allende. So for Mexico, everything is set and ready to go. Um, the itineraries are online for Greece as well. And then for Malta, itineraries will be up shortly. If okay. you or your clients are interested in taking a similar retreat elsewhere or during this year, any other period in time, we absolutely would love to work with bespoke groups as well. Great. Well, listen, and where can advisors go? Tell us, the, what's the website again? It's beyond yeah, the nest. So it's beyondthenest.org. Okay. Or you can email me. At Vanessa at beyondthenest.org. Fantastic. That's great. Yeah. Well, 
Vanessa, listen, thank you so much for, uh, you know, cluing us in on this brand, your brand new company. It sounds like a great idea. Uh, it's amazing how, you know, uh, crises like COVID can, can, you know, people come up with very creative solutions and also things that maybe you needed even before COVID. So yeah. uh, I, I wish you great luck with this. It sounds wonderful. And I know a lot of travel advisors who hear this uh, will hopefully be very interested in uh, booking their clients on your trips. And it sounds like uh, you'll have, you have a bright future ahead. So thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. Thank you, James. Thank you. I'm excited to be part of the family and looking forward to speaking with all of your advisors and everybody out there. I'm James Schillinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report.